Hey students, I just wanted to show you uh, some different methods for uh, starting your black and white, your grayscale paintings. Um, what I'm going to start with for this week is just uh, blocking in um, a landscape painting. A lot of you had expressed interest in doing some uh, paintings with scenery and that kind of thing. So uh, what you see me starting to do here is just block in shapes of value. So I'm not I'm painting um, a a mountain or a beach uh, or a sky right now. I don't want to think of it that way. The way I should be thinking about this is just painting um, the values that I see. And what I mean by values is just either the lightness or the darkness of that part of the painting. And so what I have in this image is I do have a mountain here kind of coming out of this corner. But really what I'm painting is that value. And so I'm not showing like individual rocks and crevices and cracks in the mountain. All I'm showing is that this part of this image has the darkest value. And so I'm starting with black here. And so I would I would suggest that to you guys. Some people will start with mid-tones, mid-values, and then they'll move to dark and then to light. I prefer to start with my darkest values, my darkest shadows, my darkest colors, whatever those are, and then to work to medium and then to light. It's basically what what I prefer to do. So um, that's the way I'm showing you to do it here is working dark to light. So anything in this painting that is a, that is a good, bold black, really, really dark gray, close to black, really dark color are going to be the things um, that, I, that I work on first, uh, generally speaking. There are other ways to paint. Um, if you say, if you had a gradient in the background, right, then you might want to do a gradient first. Um, and a gradient, a lot of times it's easier to work from a light to dark. That's one of the few exceptions when you're painting uh, that you would work from light to dark. But you're almost always going to be working dark to light. Um, and the idea behind that is that lights are going to represent your highlights. And those highlights are kind of the final details, right? Those final touches that you want to put into a painting. And so, again, here I've got another area that's it's pretty dark. It's kind of this this mountainside kind of being reflected in, in some water here. But you'll notice what I'm not doing. I'm not painting the water. I'm not trying to make it look like water at this point. All I'm doing is painting that value. So where is the shadow of this mountain? Um, what is the shape of that shadow? It's one of my darkest parts of the painting. And so I'm putting it down. So that's what I'm going to continue to do throughout this process. And then I'll start to, to add in some lighter colors I let go. So now I'm going to kind of a middle dark. Um, this part would represent kind of the, the reflection um, of the darker part of the sky and the same water that's reflecting that that part of the mountain. Um, and so you'll see I kind of I'll hop around the canvas here, but I'm going to be working dark to light and just identifying values and the rough shape of those values. These don't have to be super precise. This is just a general idea of the location and the shape of a, of a given value.
So here you'll see that uh, I mentioned the exception to working uh, dark to light, especially in the landscape might be if you have like a gradient in the sky. And so this particular sky, there is a kind of a, a gradient here. And so I just find it's easier um, to start with the lightest value um, when you're creating a gradient, right? And then start to slowly add more color to that and get darker and darker as you go. And so this is one of those exceptions, right? These are, um, the, the ways that I advise you to paint are like, are what I find most useful and true most of the time, but it's not the only way to paint. Um, and it's not always gonna be the best way to paint, right? Things are gonna change kind of depending on, on what you're painting, on how you're painting, on the type of uh, style that you're trying to achieve. And this is just generally speaking, you wanna work dark to light. Um, with the gradient, I find it's easier to start with the light to start to kind of blend that into dark. So that's what you'll see me do with this sky here. Um, I'm starting with pure white or very, very, very light gray. Uh, and then I'll start to add a little bit of color around the edges and blend those together. I also just realized that I haven't uh, kind of explained to you guys why my canvas is, is kind of this orangish color. Um, basically, I've just toned my canvas. Um, you don't have to do that. Um, toning your canvas is just kind of a, a loose wash. So it's just watered down paint uh, that I put on my canvas beforehand. And I, I wanted to tone my canvas um, knowing that I was working in black and white uh, because if I was applying white paint to white sections of this canvas you guys wouldn't be able to see what i was doing uh, if that makes sense it just wouldn't really show up on camera very well so i wanted to have some color to this canvas so you could see uh, all the different values that i was putting down not just the, the blacks and grays so that's the only reason for that it wasn't um, necessary to tone this canvas orange it just made it easier for you guys to see what was going on on camera So hopefully at this point, I'm going to continue to work on this a little bit more uh, just because I start to make art and then I start to get like picky and I'll, I'll you know, um, get hung up on some details. Really, at this point, though, you could realistically stop and have a pretty good foundation for your painting, right? This isn't a finished piece, but this also gives you enough information to see kind of where this painting is going to end up. You can kind of see where you, you can see the composition of the painting, you can see some depth in the painting, you can see uh, these strong uh, dark elements, right? You can see uh, 
some really nice highlights coming through the sky and the clouds. And so that's, that's kind of the idea here with blocking in is that you're creating kind of a map for the paint. Underneath. And this would already be right an okay looking work of art, but this is just the first step in it. It's taken me a little over 10 minutes to make a good foundation for the painting that I'm going to continue to work on. So hopefully you guys can see that. Hopefully it translates well on camera, but that's kind of, that's the goal of blocking it is creating kind of a roadmap for your painting so that you can see the painting that's there, even though it's not finished and you haven't done the detail work.